Good evening. Welcome to the Kingdom Cultural Center. Glad to have this opportunity to communicate with you this evening. I want you to turn to the Constitution of Mark, the ninth chapter. We're going to deal, we're going to talk for some things just briefly here on the, um, the, 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 the thought and the mindset of a denomination, which is dividing. By the way, uh, the word denomination implies a state separatism. And we're going to read what the king has to say about this, why he was on earth and he left a record uh, down here through Brother Mark, which was one of the writers uh, of the word. We read, now John answered him, John speaking of one of the apostles, saying, teacher, we saw someone who does not follow us casting out demons in your name. He goes on to say, and we forbid him because he does not follow us. We we'll go on. But Jesus said, Do not forbid him, for no one who works a miracle in my name can soon afterwards speak evil of me. For he who is not against us in our, is on our side. For whoever gives you a cup of water to drink, my name, because you belong to Christ, assuredly, I say to you, he will not in no means lose his reward. Now, I want to try to dibble, dabble here on the word reward because I want you to understand throughout all of my sessions, especially the first 30, I always like to mention that because I come off really, oh, I, I was really uncomfortable of speaking in the mannerism in which I'm the location that I am now seated. In other words, see, being seated. But we have a reward for those who stand on God's word. Now, I want you to understand something. Jesus made this statement. He is not for denominational separatism. Now, I'm going to take your mind back. Our history was my forte in high school as well in college. And what it is is that when the individuals came over here from Europe, from England, and after a period of time in 1600s and 1700s and 1800s, uh, they had slavery. I, people of my color and even the Indians were uh, <laughs> but them brothers rebelled. They, they wasn't going with, along with that slavery bit. They rebelled and started fighting, taking scalps, in fact. But what I want to say to you is that they were enslaved. And as they say, the white man, the Caucasian, came over to uh, teach them the way of the Lord, which was somewhat lopsided because separatism came into to being from that era because of certain individuals who thought they were better than others. Uh, the, the Europeans thought they were better than the Indians, and it went on, and they thought they were better than the, the Africans that they brought over, and the Chinese that were here, especially on the West Coast. But I want you to understand something. It's amazing. I find this very amazing. How, when they, when you teach someone the Word of God, how it's gravitated, it brings something into you alive. You think about Islam and a lot of individuals that um, have given their way, given themselves over to a religion, whether it's Buddha, Islam, uh, Jehovah Witness. Um, once they hear the word of God and, and they go out and they're seeking, they embrace it. They embrace it. Why? Because that is what we lost. Excuse me for a minute. That is what we lost. We lost a kingdom. He brought that kingdom 
to restoration to restore us back to, uh, I will use the term, good graces. But remember this one thing. Whatever you go through, and you're going to go through something, in most cases, because that you stand on God's word, which comes out to be morality, uh, principles, good character, uh, uh, the laws of, of the Constitution, which some embrace as religious laws. But remember this one thing. The, law, the laws of God's word are not religious laws. You can look down through all of history, and you'll never mention throughout the Old Testament. He wasn't talking about religious laws. He was talking about rulership, kingship. And just like God wanted the children of Israel to be a selective people, which they are to this day, a promise, and they are selective because of one thing, a promise that the king made to them. And when Jesus, when God made a promise to you, it was in stone. It was etched in stone, could not be removed. So I want you to keep in mind this one thing, that denomination separates. Get where, stay in the word. I had a call, phone call today from a young man that, that I really love and admire, and he wanted questions. He had questions, and, and he even lifted me up and, 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 and caused me to feel really enhanced by the words he spoke. And he wanted more words, and I was telling him a little about the kingdom, and he was wanted more about the kingdom, to the point that when we hung up from the conversation, he called me back, and he wanted to know certain things into where Scripture found. You see, I want you to understand something. You, as leaders, and especially you men, as leaders in your household, you must constantly be in the Word and study it. And by doing so, it will enhance your life. It will definitely, most definitely enhance your life. It will put a, 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 a spark to others that will come to you. You don't have to constantly talk people about Jesus or the kingdom, but your life will exhibit and glow that, that spirit of, of, of radiance that will draw others to want you to know, to want, to want them to know more about the Christ in you or what's going on. In your life. Now, keep in mind, secularism, John, the beloved, but these were men here on earth that were following Jesus to the max for three and a half years. And I want you to understand this one thing. Those three and a half years, the disciples still didn't get the essence of what Jesus was talking about. To that point, that what he did was, when Jesus rose, he came back and stayed with them for 40 days, teaching them the kingdom and what it was all about. And what causes Jesus to be king? Because the whole earth is the Lord's. And the word says, and the fullness thereof. So remember, stand on God's word. Don't back down from anybody. And I'm going to let you know that a lot of the churches that you church me, you maybe attend, when you embrace the kingdom concept, what Jesus was talking about, and by the way, you're in good company. You'll be in good company because Jesus only talked about the kingdom, healing, uh, healing the sick, uh, the blind eyes being open. All of those were the result and the the the, the uh, 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 the, 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 the presence of the kingdom letting you know that the kingdom was present. So anyone that was getting healed, anyone that was being enlightened, anyone that the dead was being raised, it was a, a, a evidence that the kingdom of God was at hand. And where does the kingdom dwell? It dwells in you. The principles, the, 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 the laws, the precepts. And once you embrace it by reading God's word, it will enhance your life and you will become legitimate. The operative word is legitimate ambassadors, such as I am, such as Paul was, 
that will teach only the kingdom, not your idea, not what you think, not your philosophy, but the kingdom of God and the culture in which it dwells, in the culture in which you dwell. At this point, this session's over, but I'm asking you to study it. Seek first the kingdom. Have a nice day. Thank you.